Honorable Minister of State for Climate Affairs, Honorable Agnes Nandutu, to reappear at CAD headquarters and uh, to clarify on certain additional areas uh, of inquiry, but she did not turn up. I would like to remind all witnesses who are a subject of investigation and at the same time to please cooperate uh, with uh, the task team of investigators. The information that we require can help either prove the allegations <coughs> against them or disprove uh, the allegations uh, that have been uh, put against them. Uh, we continue to also see the media do a lot of uh, speculative reporting, some of which is sensational and continues to promote panic uh, in, uh, in the public and to some of the witnesses. We want to caution you against uh, such probably irresponsible reporting. Let's remain objective and transparent in the way that we do uh, the investigative reporting and coverage of the Iron Sheets investigation. You are aware that the cases are being handled on a case-by-case -case basis. We opened individual case files for each and every one whom we feel is involved uh, in the Iron Sheets investigation and we submitted uh, uh, several of those case files and uh, uh, we shall only, as the police, we only respond where charges are sanctioned against the suspects. And uh, uh, so basically that is it. Uh, this week, when we receive more files that are sanctioned, we shall let you know whether uh, we shall get to let you know who is to appear next. But let's avoid uh, uh, this uh, uh, unnecessary reporting where we are, we are promoting much fear uh, in the public. Uh, this week we expect to uh, celebrate uh, it and uh, to our Muslim brothers and sisters. First of all, we want to thank them all for their level of cooperation and support uh, with the, the territorial commanders uh, in the in the different jurisdictions that we do police. Uh, we've not had uh, uh, any security uh, concerns or uh, uh, crimes arising uh, uh, during this period of Ramadan, uh, targeting Muslims uh, during the fasting period. Uh, generally, we want to say that the, the the, the, the policing of the holy month of Ramadan has been uh, very, very successful. But of course, so we have a few more days to the end of Ramadan and probably the Eid celebration. And uh, uh, towards uh, the end of uh, uh, the, the fasting period, sometimes uh, people become uh, complacent and yet uh, the threats continue to exist. So we want to call upon our all Muslim leaders uh, to review their security details now that we are approaching the end of the holy month of Ramadan and uh, where they observe any suspicious movements, any uncoordinated activity, uh, they should coordinate with our territorial commanders to address uh, those those concerns. <coughs> we had a few pockets of uh, insecurity in the Karamoja in the Karamoja region. Uh, last week, uh, there was a raid that was uh, uh, conducted. There was a raid that was uh, uh, conducted in uh, in Kotido district where suspected Dodoth warriors from Kabong uh, raided uh, a community crowd uh, that is at uh, Lokiteleyabu uh, community crowd, Lologoka parish in Kotido district, and they raided uh, over 400 heads of cattle. The joint UPDF has to uh, uh, 
officers were pursuing them, but only that uh, uh, these warriors uh, managed to kill a 14-year-old male juvenile called a doctor, uh, who was amongst those who were guarding uh, the, uh, this crowd, this community crowd at uh, Lokite Leabo. It's unfortunate. Uh, then uh, we still have uh, uh, warriors uh, who continue to attack some of the neighboring districts, like in Abim. Uh, we had an incident where about six Karamoja, Karamojong warriors attacked uh, Okech Oscar, the 34 year old uh, student at Unyama uh, National Teachers College. And uh, so when they attacked him on the 14th of this month, around 10 p.m., they were planning a raid. They, they shot uh, two arrows which got stuck into the waist. And, uh, but unfortunately enough, but fortunately enough, he didn't die and was rushed to a beam hospital where the two arrows were extracted from the waist and lower abdomen. So we strongly condemn these acts of violence that continue by the Karamajong warriors. And uh, uh, we had a, a, a success story where uh, the joint UPDF and us to manage to put out of action one of the uh, the commanders of the Karamajong warriors uh, last week. Uh, he was called Longo Kuropusto, who is uh, was uh, a former convict who escaped from Moroto prisons and uh, uh, went and started uh, organizing uh, colleagues into uh, carrying out raids uh, within Karamoja region and the neighboring districts. Now we want to... We have... Our Director of Crime Intelligence has continued to get complaints against uh, all complaints of misuse of national IDs, and uh, I'm happy that uh, today we had a brief introduction of uh, uh, the new public relations manager of NIRA who will be uh, joining us every week. But we want to, to warn money lenders against taking national IDs as collateral. It has become a, uh, a habit. This is something that we talked about some time back. But it still remains uh, a habit amongst money lenders, especially those who give out to mic micro loans uh, to members of the public who don't have security. So they are basically uh, uh, attaching uh, national IDs. And this is, it is uh, illegal and it is also criminal. So, uh, as the police, together with our sister security agencies, we are concerned against the increased misuse of national IDs as collateral, especially in Wenge district. We've gotten so many complaints from the Soga region of Wenge, and in the districts of Dokolo and Amolaka in the Lamo sub region, uh, together with other districts in Central. As you are all aware, national IDs have no economic or monetary value and are supposed to be used exclusively for identification purposes. Uh, therefore, any act of confiscation, removing, taking, or handing over a national ID as collateral is illegal. Uh, and uh, it, uh, because it denies the owner of the national ID the ability uh, to use it, uh, for identification purposes and in the many other transactions uh, where the national ID is required for is required and even in movements while traveling uh, within the country. So we'd like to call upon anyone whose national ID was used as collateral or confiscated to report to the nearest police for further assistance. Uh, under the Registration of Persons Act, Section 77B, it is an offence 
uh, if a person without authority deprives or dispossesses a holder of his or her national identification card or early alien's identification card. Then uh, there are also other offenses uh, whereby if a person unlawfully keeps or takes possession of a national identification card or alien's identification card uh, uh, that belongs to another person, it is an offense. And uh, uh, it is also an offense if somebody is found in possession of more than one national identification card or alien's identification card, that is it, intended to show the person's identity. So these money lenders, especially those informal ones, who keep on collecting these, these uh, national IDs, if we find you with them, you just know that you're going to be charged under uh, the Registration of Person Persons Act, Section 77. And uh, a person who commits this offense and is convicted is liable to a fine not exceeding 48 currency points. That is about 960,000 uh, shillings. Or imprisonment not exceeding three years, or both the fine and the imprisonment at the same time. And even to remind these uh, micro lenders that uh, the microfinance guidelines have always, uh, that have been issued out to them. Uh, they have indicated that a money lender shall not take national IDs, a passport, a warrant card, or other documents uh, as collateral, including uh, ATM cards, uh, a bank uh, savings card, and so on and so forth. So they should uh, really take, uh, take note of that. Now, last week we had put up a very serious man hunt. You remember there was a video that was captured in Masindi where we saw uh, a, a man who was uh, assaulting an elderly man and uh, went on to strip him naked, uh, humiliated him, and caused him to move naked in public. Now, uh, uh, that, that we, we managed to, uh, to track down uh, the suspect uh, who was uh, torturing uh, the, the elderly man. Uh, we established his particulars as uh, Mwesije Mustafa, alias Karunji, uh, of, Chijura, of Chijura North Central Division, Masindi Municipality. Is the one who was captured in a video which went viral, torturing uh, his mentally ill 52-year-old uh, uncle. The person whom he was torturing in the video was his uncle, uh, who is mentally ill and known by all family members. Uh, that uncle, that elderly uncle, was identified as a singwire, a Dara Conrad of Karamasel, Central Division, Masindi Municipality in Masindi District. Uh, so this vicious assault, which occurred on, on the 2nd of uh, April, uh, happened at Chitura North, at the home of uh, Mwesije Mustafa, alias Karundi, who is a, a nephew uh, of the victim. Uh, we all witnessed how he harshly tortured by way of repeated beatings, dragging the uncle on the surface. And uh, uh, he claims that the mentally ill uncle had stolen money from the house, 600,000 shillings, uh, which, was not, uh, which was not verified. And then he went on to further humiliate him when he undressed him and uh, caused him to move uh, stuck naked in public. So we had to put a lot of resources in tracking, in tracing him, and we managed to arrest him from Kampala. Our CID task team did a great job in, uh, in tracking him down. We even recorded his uh, uh, admission uh, from CID headquarters and transported him to, 
uh, Masindi. So he was charged in court uh, with the, the aggravated <coughs> torture uh, of, uh, his, of his arm. So we continue to strongly condemn all, all forms of torture uh, and uh, uh, we shall do everything within our means to ensure that uh, we, 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 we arrest uh, perpetrators of such acts of violence and impunity in the community. Now, last week, uh, the police at KMP talked about uh, uh, 17 children who were recovered and uh, uh, in what we suspect to have been a child uh, uh, trafficking uh, process. Uh, but now we have uh, one of the suspects, among the, the six whom we have, Amos Betungura, a former pastor, uh, who has come out to claim that all the 17 children are his biological uh, children. So our territorial police in Kampala Metropolitan North and Wakiso Division have now obtained samples of DNA from a one Amos Betungura, a former pastor, after the, he claimed to be the father of the 17 children, aged between one to six years. Uh, these children were recovered from Mongkowe village, Kaliti Parish, named the sub-county in Wakiso, as they were being transported to Barara district, uh, where the pastor comes from. Now, the tests will be run against the samples picked from the 17 children to determine whether they match or not. Uh, as you are aware, the children with the help of the probation officer and the Child and Family Protection Unit in Wakiso are uh, being taken care of in a shelter, in a shelter home. And uh, we have six suspects in custody so far, including Amos Tungura, uh, the alleged father. We have Nayeba Carolina, Ashava Dina, to Sassura Betty Komhanj Junik, and one called Lloyd. Uh, during the interrogation, the suspect admitted that due to the marital problems he's been facing and the additional challenges from his pastoral work after his church was closed during the first COVID lockdown, uh, he, he decided to place his children under the care of uh, some of his relatives after failing to provide uh, for them in terms of feeding, uh, school education, medication, and clothing, uh, clothing among others. Uh, he has indicated the revealed about to uh, five, uh, he has given us an identity of five females uh, who are some of the mothers to the 17 uh, children. But if we establish that he gave false and misleading information to the police to protect himself or someone else, we shall again charge him with giving false information and trying to obstruct justice. And if it's established that he's the biological father, we shall charge him with failure to provide basic necessities to his children and their mothers. Uh, so that is uh, uh, the additional uh, information from that side. And uh, we don't have much today. There was uh, an incident in the Chira Division and where you get it in? where uh, the police at Guto responded to a disturbance call of, uh, of alleged criminal trespass. So when they responded, they found uh, a male suspect or stranger trying to scale the wall of the, of the home to, of the home to a one called uh, Kawaisi Rosette, uh, who is uh, a staff at Mokono General Hospital. Uh, however, uh, when we, when our teams responded, of course they fired a, a shot. When the stranger or suspect tried to flee, they injured his leg and managed to arrest him. And uh, uh, eventually, when uh, the two occupants who were keeping the home came out to try and 
had established who it was, they found that uh, uh, the stranger or suspect was a boyfriend uh, to one of the girls inside the, inside the home. So the boyfriend was shot and injured as he tried to sneak into the girlfriend's family home <coughs> at uh, at but, but toy in, uh, in the way you get it. Eh? Uh, this incident happened on the 16th of April at around 3 a.m. Uh, where, like I said, police at Vuto and the way Ugera responded to a disturbance call about a stranger or suspected criminal who was trying to break the small, who was trying to to break the small gate or to sneak into the family home through the small gate. And uh, uh, this uh, stranger or boyfriend has been identified as Biro Michael, a 26-year-old border border rider of the Kere uh, village, uh, and uh, a boyfriend to somebody called Namata Margaret, a 26-year-old niece to uh, the reporter or the owner of the home. So. But uh, we still also want to give a warning to young adults in, uh, in relationships. Why do you sneak at 3 a.m. into a family home or into your girlfriend's uh, uh, home at such an hour? It's an ordinary hour. The gate, of course, is locked and then uh, you try to scale the wall and for it. It is very, very risky. So we want to warn young adults in relationships that sneaking into your partner's home or family home is not only tricky but uh, very dangerous. One can easily be perceived to be a suspected criminal uh, with, uh, uh, with the potential to threaten or, or, or cause bodily harm. Now, here when you look at the circumstances, it shows that the victim knew the home very, very well which means he has been going late at night and time and sneaking into that home. So we, we urge young adults to avoid such risky behaviors, uh, especially at night. It's good that he's out of danger and uh, recovering uh, very well. Then uh, police in Bundibujo is uh, actively investigating uh, a theft, uh, uh, a, a case of uh, uh, child stealing or the theft of a newly born child that occurred at uh, Bundibujo Hospital uh, in Bundibujo District. Uh, and. Uh, Uh, the, the facts that we do have is that uh, uh, this stolen baby has not yet been recovered. Uh, but the victim or the, uh, the mother identified as uh, Kabugo, Kabugo Duffin, uh, she was still a young mother, just aged 18, uh, she was just above 18 years. A resident of Uyaya village in Naba sub county, Udibujo uh, district. She was admitted at Chich Kicho Health Center for to give birth, but due to complications, being a young, a young mother, expectant mother, she was referred to Udibujo uh, main hospital where she delivered a baby boy and was admitted for close monitoring. Now, it is uh, while at uh, the hospital that a certain lady, and we've always uh, warned uh, uh, expectant mothers to be very, very careful uh, because of some of these uh, uh, security concerns at hospitals. So a, a lady, a lady stranger approached her. Uh, she was putting on the attire uh, of a nurse. She was dressed like a nurse, and then she asked her whether the baby was hers, and uh, pretended to check the temperature of the baby, and later took the baby as if she was uh, uh, taking her to the nursery for uh, further, further examination. 
so she asked the mother to call the. Uh, she told, uh, she asked one of the caretakers called Masika Perus uh, to follow her so that it appears that she's uh, a genuine and, uh, and uh, an official from the Gujo Hospital. But along the way, she tricked the girl and told her, go and pick the immunization card and then you come. So that is when she got a chance to disappear with the baby uh, from the ward. Now, uh, this shows that uh, in some of our hospitals, there's still some bit of uh, laxity in, uh, in, the, in the security, uh, in the security, some of the security protocols in hospitals are not so uh, uh, strictly followed because how does, how can someone come and put on that cloak of uh, medics and then enter a ward and then not even a supervisor from the hospital can get to to uh, question. Uh, there is no good monitoring, so people just trespass inside the hospital like that and come out. So we are working with the hospital and also uh, put up our intelligence teams to ensure that uh, we trace for the suspect and have the baby recovered. We are, we, we shall recover the baby like we've done in all the other. Uh, incidents of theft or for